Greetings, listeners, and we are back for... You know what? For right now, at this point in the story, this really is going to be the penultimate episode of the Romance of the Ship Kingdoms, our D&D Spelljammers campaign. We have a very large group with us because of just how big this episode is going to be for the story. We have a massive group of people all heading towards the same ship, the GIF. Thank you, because some things are going to be happening. Because the first person that's going to be arriving is going to be you, Figs. As you're approaching, Bastion's just been pacing back and forth. Maman comes in and opens the door and goes, There's a large security detail at the docks. Is there anything we should be concerned about? Frankly, at this point, there's a lot we should be concerned about. Oh, dear. Maman shifts and turns into a cat. I'm just, I, 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 I'm just a little house cat. I'll be in here. Keep the cat. <laughs> no, don't do this to me. <laughs> As your ship approaches closer and closer, the guards they look pretty pissed. As some of your deckhands come in to try to approach, at they me or at something else. <laughs> oh, I'm getting there, figs. They push the deckhands out of the way and they kick open your door. They see the cat and they go. Just as the report said, Bastion's bri- Bastion's here with his bride, and then there's a filthy abyssal, the one that murdered the king. Didn't think we'd find the evidence, did you, Bastion? They hold up a necklace. Mm-mm-mm. It almost worked. You almost had the kingdom in your hands, traitor. And they grab Bastion and they slam him to the ground. And they say, give us the cat. Figs, what do you do? Uh, just a moment. <laughs> This is just, like, this, we will say, like, everything is just slowing down. Bastion's been slammed. There's spears all at his face. There's spears pointing at you. You can hear all of your deck, all of your workers. Everyone's just being subdued by these massive shock troopers. Boom. Uh, there was two that knocked him down, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, cl- uh, I'm gonna cast Glare. And they need to make a wisdom saving throw. Nope, they roll the two. Uh, they're going to stop immediately and reassess their life decisions. <clears throat> Wait, no, no, this isn't right. It, we weren't thinking like this until after Michael. <clears throat> he pukes blood and drops dead. And now I have a name. The other one looks and goes, do you stop him before he starts talking? I'll give you a chance. Yeah, this isn't <laughs> right. What do you do, Fix? I'm going to... Specifically tell him, don't say any more names if you want to live. He immediately stops. No, the general. You two need to go. Now, release the prince. No, release our king. But, but. There is some trickery of foot, gentlemen. We, we need to get these two out of here before that envoy comes. It's cat, you sneaky devil. You just derailed the... You just got past a certain event. So... I think I saw the spells, like I have to. You have time because one of your deckhands shouts and says, there is a strange looking ship coming. The new commander, the new general looks at you and says, that's the envoy. You need to get out of here. Uh, so when you talk about a necklace, he pulled it out, right? Mm-hmm. Can I ask to take it with me to study it? Yes, he hands it to you. Uh, I will help bash it up afterwards. And if we gotta go, we gotta go. The envoy ship is approaching faster. It's getting closer. There's not enough time, Fix. You need to make a choice. This is a hard choice I'm going to be making you give. You can either grab... Because the general said he'll protect whoever you leave behind and make sure nothing happens. But you can either take Bastion or the princess and their lover. Who do you take? Those two are on my ship, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, And you see that the princess is actually taking a short sword and cut her hair. To where it's now just super short now. And she's kind of dressed like a warrior. She has uh, a short sword at her hip. I'm gonna do something crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm giving her command of the helm. I want them to get out of there. Oh. We will address this choice after. This is really big. Now, Figs, so you're taking Bastion, I see. Yes. And for free, Maman is still going to be in cat form. And of course, he comes with you. And he's just, why is my necklace in their possession? Oh, that son of a bitch, Michael. I should have known. That's why he came to my bedchambers. I thought he liked me. 
Maman is extremely pissed. <laughs> he just does kind of just an angry purr. Mm, pet me, please. Chief <clears throat> Chin screeches. Um, so the guards are no longer going to be a problem. Nope. Yeah, they would have like been it. a problem. They would have been a problem <laughs> if you wouldn't have pulled off that glitter. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's going to move further in with him then to try to like find a hiding spot. Because I don't want to use another spell yet because. I don't know where we actually are. So you're coming. Oh, you're at the gift ship. At the gift. At the gift ship. No, no, I meant like if we're on the ethereal plane or not. Oh, you're on the regular ethereal plane. So as you're getting off of your ship, running with Bastion, that's when you notice to the side that there is a. You've heard legends of them, of the Ithalids, of the Mind Flayers. But this one looks not like your picture books because this one's color has just become kind of like a gray and his eyes are just very look lethargic. He has like massive bags under all of them and he's just wearing what looks like a really, really beat up wizard's tunic. And you hear Bastion yell, Jerry. <laughs> oh Lord. So you, t- Oh, you two beat. Mm. Wait, what, what's dumb? Let me guess. You two are running for your lives and you need to find a place to hide. I sure hope so, yeah. Hmm, you know, this could save me a lot of time, and I really wasn't trying to figure out how to find you later, so how about this? Boom! He opens what looks like a portal gateway, and you just see what looks like a little modest home inside of a cave. There's my hut in the ma- that's my home in the mountain. If you go there, you'll be safe. It's up to you if you go or not, honestly, I could care less. Choice is yours, little changeling. Or should I say, pale mother. <laughs> she, she very much does not like that name. Uh, <laughs> but she's going to do something crazy. Uh, so she has physical mass. Yes. Do you think it would work if she puts it on someone else? Yeah, I don't see why not. What What are you going to do? Uh, she's going to give Bastion a mass that's been handed down to her family. Of the first person they interacted with when they came to the, like, basically the stars. Okay. Oh, oh, oh my. Wow. That's kind of a very important mask you're giving Bastion. So he's going to be very careful with this. What do you want him to do with it? Where it basically, uh, she has a couple masks. Like, she does not want to be bound by people right now. Okay. Well, so... I didn't expect to have to do this so soon, but here we go. When he puts on the mask, it looks like a young version of da 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 the emperor, the emperor, the the original emperor. Oh, yeah, changelings. The first person that is part of the bloodline of the changelings that helped start the originate the changeling bloodlines was someone of high elf descent. And happens to come from the same family tree of the of Everin's family. <laughs> oh, now high elves, I see. They're loosely descendant. They came from the high elf DNA. No, I can't tell you who the other one was. You'll have to find out later. But yeah, that's who first came to the stars was was one of the first members of the high elves. Uh, l- let me ask you this, Figs. Have you ever worn this mask before? Uh, on my naming day, yes, but nothing beyond that. Hmm. Okay, because I was just trying to figure out how does Figs feel knowing that, but we'll find out later. Well, but... I mean, she, I don't think she looked at herself. I think she just knows the memory is tied to it vaguely. Okay, so how does Figs feel seeing this face? Uh, she's shocked. It's like, uh, I've never, I've never, uh, talk to someone like this before <laughs> and well we can just basically just call him your sacred ancestor in the voice of your sacred ancestor this is strange is there a, i need a way to look at myself and as she puts on her uh her own mask that's like trying to think of what it would be Mary looks and goes oh wow Oh, you're a special little changeling. Yeah, I remember him. We had good we had good times back in the day. Yeah, I was there when your race was born. Oh, this is bringing back such fond memories. 
with the with the with the birth with the birth of your race, it helped seal away some one of the greatest evils. Love was supposed to help conquer all evil, but they want to taint that and bring back that great evil, which was needed for your guys' death. I don't think you want to go through that story out here in the open, though. I do not. Uh, she's gonna put on a mask that specifically came from her mother's side. Hmm. <laughs> All righty. Well, I'm gonna say that one's like a human sorceress. I like. I'll allow you to come up with how how she how the sorceress will look. But do you go through the portal afterwards? Yes. Figs, you safely get you and Bastion away from the town. But I will say there was a couple consequences for. Bastion putting on that mask for a couple people did see what looked like a young version of the actual emperor and word is just getting around quick now I need to go to you Bella yes because there are consequences for what is about to happen oh no Uh, because Seraphim appears to be going ballistic on the deck he is extremely angry. Those stupid gif, they can't do anything right. Why <laughs> why does the sacred ma- why does the master even why are they allowed to exist? What what's going on? Well, the person I needed that we needed to come even while we're coming to this filthy ship. <laughs> they were supposed to have her and be handing them to us. And they would get their little they would get their little their little person that caused the murder of their stupid king. But these gifts can't do anything right. It's I need to get you down there because Father Limick, for some reason, believes that you will be able to handle it. Well, if, the, well, if he has faith in me, I suppose I can. But what about <laughs> you? What, would, what will you do? Well, I'm going to be chasing down a ship. Because now, nah, because not only couldn't they hold on to this person, they've allowed this ship to get away, and I need to make sure she's not on it. So I need you down there, making to fix this mess we're going into. I, mm, no, I, you know, it's bad enough that Father Limick is that you're Father Limick's favorite, but even Michael, I have to suffer the fact that Michael. Even, you know what, I'm spoiling the surprise, because yeah, Father's Limick is giving you the flock, because you're supposed to marry Michael. I want, and, and, and then she's just like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, my, it's supposed to be this stupid union, the idea, it disgusts me, and you know what else, I'm sick of it. She, she's... But Belmire is like she is still visibly processing the fact that she is going to marry Michael. Like, still very visibly processing that. Like, uh, what? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the head archons, the one who sits at the pinnacle of Mount Severus. It just, mm, I'm so happy for you. I'm just even knowing where you came from. I'm um. You. <laughs> I'm dragonborn. I came. Mm, I. Uh. Um. Um. Well, you're half right. I. I'm. I. Sh- Bella, sh- I'm going to offer you it. You have a choice to make here. Uh. Y- yes. Do you want to be free, or do you still just want to follow behind Father Limick? I don't understand. Free. I am free. None of you are free. <laughs> I've You're not seen... making any sense. And she starts to step away from Seraphim. You're not free. You're just a pawn. I'm a and, pawn. I found and, out the truth. And Bella, don't uh, leave me. Yeah. And you see in her hands the spark of fire magic. She is not liking what she's hearing. And Seraphim would know her general go to when things start to not make sense Bella. is to make the problem go away with fire. Bella, they made me think I'm one of them. They made me think I'm a celestial. For so many years, I've done horrible things because of what they did. You don't even know who I am. Of course I do. You're Seraphim. You're one of the celestials. You're one of the flock. Give me a goddamn brother. Uh, uh, Seraphim is crying. Seraphim is crying. And she just starts to crack and shatter. Um, 
she yeets a firebolt at him. Like he takes it. How much damage does it do? Um, firebolt is a cantrip. His body starts to crack and shatter more. Um, that he takes a step at you. Uh, nineteen fire damage. He takes a step at you. She she steps back and. At the top of her lungs, she just screams bloody murder. Like, like trying to get the doctor's attention, the rest of the Celestials' attentions. Like, she doesn't know what's going on. She knows Seraphim attacked her earlier, and then he started to talk nonsense. So, something's going on. She I, doesn't know what. My chains were undone. I remember everything. I'm not Seraphim. Yes, <laughs> Then I don't know who you are, but you are not one of I, us. I. He looks up as the doctor. You've heard all this. <laughs> oh shit! I'm already crying right now. As he looks at all of you, he just panics. He looks at you, Bella, and he just looks at the sky and he just goes Dendar as he shatters into a golden dust. <laughs> that memory flashes in your mind again. I don't know what's going on. That wasn't Seraphim. That wasn't. That wasn't. That was someone trying to stir, stir chaos. And and I'm I'm just gonna back back into the doctor. Like I'm, my hands are uh, Bella's hands are shaking. Like just. Oh, it's, wait a second. Oh, god damn it. Oh, mm. the other Celestials they drop to their knees. It's. The ship is in chaos as a massive light billows on the ship. Standing seven feet tall, just a golden white a white gown with a golden energy sheening from him. Trying to look upon his face, you just see a shining light, but you can see his brown hair just as descending down in a magnificent crown that looks kind of thorny, halo above his head. Yeah. All, all the celestials drop, bowing their heads as they know this is. You know, this is Michael. I I bow my head as well. Michael picks your chin up and picks your hand and kisses your hand. No, <laughs> not not you. Never you. What is wrong? I, I, I can feel your pain from here. And I proceed to describe to Michael what um the what uh the seraphim double uh did uh, I don't, that wasn't him michael looks at you he looks and even though with the shining on his face you can tell the pain that he's about to tell you is true i'm sorry but that was seraphim but he had become tainted an evil one of those foul beings from humblewood is in our presence and he had become tainted by them. Look at what their cursed presence had done to one of our most beloved celestials. As he points to the pile of golden dust. This is that moment I told you, Phoenix, where you need to make a choice. Do you approach the dust or do you just stand there and listen? I look I look between the dust and Michael, considering what, what's been told, and I take one step forward saying if he was tainted what if what could we bring him back and 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 untaint him surely surely we could do that which direction did you take a step forward to towards the dust okay i described around your head what looked like blocks yes they all get undone oh shit <laughs> yeah and this is where i need to know how you're going to react bella because what you're looking at Seraphim spoke true as it all comes back to you. Oh, shit. Allow um, me to rewind time 20, okay. 23 years ago, everyone. 23 years ago, at, after three years of the birth of a pair of twins, Bella and Kella, shit. the proud tw the children of Astaroth and Dindar. Oh, they shit. Were, they were fleeing. They were fleeing with their beloved twins because Dindar was in danger. Because the word had been going around of the death of many gods and the celestials just doing the most monstrous actions. And Dindar was already grieving because her precious children had been dying one by one. She literally held Tiamat in her arms as she died. Michael was standing above her with, her, with his flaming sword as he laughed. 
Your mother is cu- cooing, holding you to. As a familiar voice is heard, as your father is standing there with his we- with his weapons ready. Ah, ah, there you are. You never would get far from me. The shattering begins. Thor's doom has found his host. The chains are broken. My master is free, and our plan has begun. You hear your father, Astaroth, say, Father Limic, you mother. What do the eldest evils want with it? <laughs> there are no more eldest evils. They were easy to destroy. With the help of my master empowering me, I have achieved new powers. And soon I will ascend and my soul will be one with Thor's doom. It will be beautiful. But to achieve that, I need your children. So, for one who appreciates deals, I'll trade you and your wife's lives for your children. And I'll make it even fairer to let you know I will care for them. I will love them. And the best part is I'll let you watch the entire time as I taint them, make them mine. And then when the time comes, I'll have them kill them, kill you themselves. As Father Limic licks your father's side of his face, it will be delicious. I could kill you both right now so easily. <laughs> but it'll be even better having your own kids do it. But they'll be mine, won't they? So make a choice. What is it? Tick, tock, tick, tock. What is it? What is it? Just a no! I'll do it. I'll do it. I knew you would. Because you love her. And you love your kids. Even if I'm gonna fucking make you walk every second of their lives make you watch every happy birthday every time I shower them with love my love Pharaoh's Dune's love but they'll still be alive that's enough for you because you're such a good father <laughs> you're such a good father and here's the best part is I'm going to also instill one other rule to make sure if your kids ever say your names <laughs> They'll die. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this is me out of character right now. Just holy shit. So if even if they want to call on the ones they love, they'll die. <laughs> <laughs> now come, kids. Your new father will love you. Oh, and the shattering's done. Everything's coming to fruition. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, kids. And as he kisses both of your heads, a crown of locks appear, sealing your memories. Who's Here's the question. Who unlocked Kella's? Oh. And we're back to you, Bella. How? And that's the secret of your birth. She is visibly shocked. Um, Michael turns and looks at you and goes, Are you okay, Bella? I... I... I'm fine. Um, That's my girl. I need, I need something to put that in because. Shouldn't we just throw it away over the ship? I mean, it's just filth. But Maybe. I'll respect your, I'll respect your wishes. Actually, yes. I mean, I, he takes. If your we hands. can bring him back, we can unfilthify him, can't we? You feel kind of an animosity coming from Michael. Mm-hmm. Bring him back. Yes, and then we can unfilthify him. You know what? It, in honor of, and he drops to his one knee, Bella. Yes. I, now, I think this as a wedding gift to you, because I have already asked Father Limic's permission. He thinks it would be fantastic with, for you to be my bride, to sit at the head of the Celestials of the Archon. And oh. yes, as a wedding gift to you, I will have this remains preserved well thank you may i keep them with me i just because if 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 i'm to go out and do something in the world then if i find someone who can bring him back then it would be easier if the remains are with me wouldn't it i will trust your decisions father limic has ensured that you will always know what's right 
and your faith has never been wavered before. So I will trust you. Now I must go. And before he goes, I give him a hug. And and I say, I would be honored to be your bride. (laughs) Ah, Michael hugs you back happily and goes, now I must go. There (laughs) are some alarming things that are unexpectedly happening. I don't want to worry you. The doc- doctor, please, and see to Bella. She seems to be a little shaken. I will be gone. And Michael fades away. Um, Once he's gone, I find something and I gather up the ashes. I'm keeping them with me. Good doctor, you see Bella picking up these golden ashes. You saw everything go down. How do you react to all this? Oh, <clears throat> Doctor is astonished uh, and just a big mixture of feelings he didn't even realize he could have. Uh, so the first thing he does is he just he walks over the belly, gently puts one of his hands on her shoulder, and offers to help uh, sweep up the remnants of her brother into a trash can or something for her to hold on to. So, uh, oh. Bella, just because yeah. some glowing tart pops up in front of you, you're gonna marry the guy. That that is Michael. He is. He's the first of the flock. And, well, uh, if Father Limit thinks he's good enough, then who well, am I, I didn't to vote say for him. No? We vote. Hmm. Hey, you don't? Oh. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, Bella. I lived a yeah. very long time. Longer than I'll ever admit to anybody. I can tell you these arranged marriages never work out. Oh, well, except maybe once. But uh, think about this. You You seem like the type of person who warms the heart. And if you feel that you're compelled to marry Michael to unify your people, I would say that there are other ways than sealing yourself to some feathery tart who just popped up on my ship without permission. (laughs) Well, true. And if you would, uh, I'd like to examine the remains of your brother and uh, see if there's something I can do to possibly help you and him one day. Yes, um... Perhaps not on the ship, though. I I don't think Father Limic would approve of me keeping these ashes. I see. Bella, Bella quickly, roll me an Arcana roll. Okay. Um, Arcana. Because your bracers are starting to <laughs> shine with a brilliant light. Oh, boy. Uh, that would be a six total. T. T. It, it's crackling. It's You can barely hear the voice. And you can't hear the full statement. All you can finally make out is one word. Is it just says "auntie"? Uh, I I look at the braces and then it's like, um, I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot happening, and I don't know what to do. Maybe shopping. <laughs> <laughs> and you finally approach the dock of the gift ship. It's a buzz with energy, with just chaotic energy. You. Bella, you're following the static Bella, and that's when a very gray-looking Ithalid approaches you too and goes and looks at you specifically, the Doctor. This you actually know Jerry from your past. You've encountered him in many of your travels. I like Jerry. It's, Jerry likes. He's probably Jerry probably think generally only thinks of you as probably the only person he can tolerate. <laughs> oh, Doctor! It, I didn't know you were still around. It, I'm so sorry with what happened with your wife. I'm still f- trying to find a way to free her from those monsters. But how are you? It's been it's been <laughs> too long. Greetings, Jerry. I give a polite little courtesy bow. He and, bows back. And I, I pass him a small object, uh, inhalant. <laughs> I was hoping I'd run into you. Uh, I whipped something special up for my favorite patient. <laughs> you Just uh, don't... Yeah. I was just going to say, you always had the best medicine for me because I refused to partake of brains, so I was actually going to seek you out, so thank you very much. You're most welcome. Just don't use the snare in open flame. And uh, take two of these in the morning and then call me, or something like that. I am a doctor! And Jerry turns to you, Bella. You. Yeah, me. What? The child... Stolen from a blessed union of pure love. She looks uncomfortable. I know the curse placed on you, so I won't say the names, but if you come with me, I have the answers you can seek. Will the doctor come? My friend is always welcome in my home. And if you're comfortable with me being there, Bella, then I will I will accompany you. 
But if not, it's quite fine. She turns to the doctor. I think I think you're the only one I can trust right now. Well, I'm so, very honored, and I will help you in any way I can. Thank you. So come with me. And Jerry opens a portal to his to his cave home. And... See the doctor quickly snort something off his sleeve, this blue powder. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry's just, oh, doctor. <laughs> um, Vitamin and, C. Yes, and making sure she's got all her belongings, <laughs> including the um, MacGuffin that Father Limick gave her. Mm-hmm. Um, she steps through that portal. Bella and the doctor going into the portal. Jerry says, I just gotta wait on two others. And as I said, all answers will be revealed. Okay. Um, I try to, probably should have used the lavatory before we came. Um, <laughs> and I, as, as, as soon as she's through that portal, Belmire is gonna find somewhere to sit down and just her head in hands, just like... <laughs> What the life become? And now we're going to another big moment because before I go to this character, it is time for one of the first big announcements to the cluster. My subjects, I don't come to you as the son of the emperor. I come to you now claiming my birthright. My father has been kidnapped. He's gone. It's, I fear, the worst. I... They have told me they have killed my father. They have slain my son. My brother has turned against me. So I announce I am your new emperor. And I declare war. And following your father's decree is a repeating report that there is the immediate demand for a capture of one individual that looks like a deer there to be immediately brought to hit brought brought to him alive and unharmed and we will and then that's when chris can you remind me again was it rose it's rose excellent rose that whole bit and you just heard that what is clearly your description being on the on the large communication crystal on the ship. Staring in disbelief, Rose continues to stare. Then she, like, tilts her head to look out of the corner of her eye. Did the crew she's with hear that as well? Oh, they, they are, don't worry, they are sighted with you. They would never do try to turn you in or anything. They, they look and they go, don't worry, if we have to, we'll hide you in the bottom of the ship. No one will know you're here. Okay. Rose just takes a deep breath and says, then we press onward. How far are we? <sighs> Let me try it again. Then I press onward. How far away are we? How far away are we to the gif? There. We should we should be approaching them within the hour. Oh, and Miss Rose, there was a little imp that appeared earlier, and this whole experience is new to us because we always thought you your kind were legends. And the little imp all he told us was to tell you that the chains need to be remade. The chain or change? Chains. C H A I N S. Yep. Rose kind of just nods and then she like focuses onward. And that we are to ensure that you are to meet with a wizard there. It's they say he is a he is an Ithalid, but he is safe to communicate with. But we so don't worry, we will ensure that you get there. As you're getting closer, you <laughs> What looks like a what looks like a blockade, and this is clearly from the High Elf Council. And as you're getting there, your crew they get you under the deck. Okay. And as you're hiding underneath there, you hear them say, "Look, we we're looking for this individual. They need to be brought to the Great Carrion immediately." It's like, hey, look, you know our people are neutral in all of this. Look here, little gel man. You people are going to need to make a choice because things are changing here in the cluster. You're either with the high elves or you're with or you're with Stannis and don't tell me that you would even be stupid enough to side with the celestials. We we don't side with anyone, man. We don't side with anyone, sir. It can't just the cluster be for just be free thinking and not be with sides. This is why we, you know, your little free thinking ways are going to be 
coming to an end soon anyway. So enjoy this thinking as why you got it. Oh, and if you were stupid enough to hide hide this person away from us, there will be serious consequences. Well, whatever that did is, we'll pay it gladly. You make it through. The doc is the chaos of what's been going on. It's thankfully your crew gives you a robe to hide what you look like. But right. there's, there's the Isolid that they describe that's just waiting at the bottom of the entrance to your ship. I haven't seen a Humblewood Denison in so very long. How are you people doing? Well, the past, past few decades could be kinder to us considering a primordial firestorm slipped over, over our home. But other than that, we're doing fine, I would like to say. That, granted, I am troubled that you had to go through that, but... It, I am happy to hear that you are all at least thriving and at least happy. When the great ceiling happened, I was one of the only few individuals who would remember, even remembered your, remembered your kind. Little one, there's you're one of the answers to, to a great, well, a great crime that has been done to our planes. You were brought here for, it was not by mistake. It was for a reason, and I'm scared to ask you of this tremendous debt, I mean, this tremendous task that's going to be set forth for you. But Behind think, the hood of a robe, Rose is just staring. So I think you will have the right people with you to get you through this. Now, please, Rose, Jerry opens a portal, which is, looks like, to his home in a cave. We are waiting just for one more. All answers will be revealed. Please, Rose, if you will. Does Rose go through the portal? No, she doesn't. Ah, what what will Rose do? Rose merely shakes her head and says, I never gave you my name. And there is so much distrust in us in those words. As she turns and walks away, she has, has a gift lord to meet. Ooh, Jerry gets worried, but he's mm. going to go, if I try to follow her, it will make things worse. Oh, dear. All right, Rose, you can see, follow the signs you... I mean, come on, they still have castles and things and such in Humblewood. So you can assume where to find the Lord. The only thing is, it's just, it looked like there, this was a, owned by the gift, but now you see what looks like banners of, yeah, that's obviously a silver stag. And as you get in, sitting on the throne, this is... Well, yeah, it's obviously it's a high elf. She's a she's a female. She stands at about five foot six. You are looking at this. This is actually Helios's younger sister and Everin Everin's second cousin and Stannis' daughter Hera. But unlike 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 her brother and her father, she doesn't wear golden or shining armor. Hers is just more like a scar scarlet like scarlet deep red. Yeah, she is the crimson dragon of the battlefield. Her helmet looks more like an actual dragon. And as she sees you approaching, she gets she sits up and then she lifts herself from her seat, cracks her neck from side to side, and takes a step step down from her throne and goes, Hmm, are you another merchant coming to try to bring me more weapons preparing for the to prepare for the coming war? Who are you, Name stranger? Nay, my lady, and Rose gives a curtsy. And then she looks around and then says, I came here to meet with the Lord of the Gifts, so I get the feeling he has passed away, she says with a bit of a questioning tone. Unfors unfortunately, Lord Giftman has... We're still trying to figure out exactly how he had met his end. It appears there has been some foul trickery. And... My father, my father was the one who had the closest actual relations with Lord Githman, never believing, never believe what my foul uncle says. So that is why we have taken control. So I am the acting, I am the acting Lord right now. The people, the people of the gift are under the connect, the protection of my father, Stannis, and of the Merchant's Guild, actually. Sadly, I'm, I am in mourning of my my beloved cousin, Everin, apparently he, he has passed away. It's... But how may I help you? Why were you looking for the Lord Giftman? Can I roll an insight on this woman? Mm-hmm. Go right ahead. Hold on. Let me finish marking this one. She asked, uh, and she... Oh, okay. Insight. And that's a natural 20, folks. So you, will you are you just trying to find out if her words are truthful or if she's holding anything back? Porquinello dose. Oh, she's being 100% forthright. She, she goes, now... 
I have a question for you. So you're looking for Lord Giffman, so... Hmm. With a bit of a sigh, she says, I am here to collect, see through a promise that was made. Wait a minute. As Hera is piecing this together, there is a crack, a loud boom from the door as it's mashed open and... Rose, try to stay calm as you hear what sounds like one of your deckhands. He sounds pretty bad in bad condition. My beloved niece, I've been getting around as fast as I can. There's so much to prepare and I come here and I see this. Now, my dear niece, I'm looking for something that belongs to me. That that one thought he could hide from me. You wouldn't. Happened to encounter it, have you? Hera takes a step blocking you from his view. This stranger that just came in, Rose. I have no idea what you're speaking of, father. I mean, uncle. Um, and you can hear the shakiness in her voice. Hera, Hera, you need to make a choice right here, right now. There is going to be a war, and my foolish brother has already made his claims, and... If he thinks he's taking the gift from me, he's sadly mistaken. You know what that means, don't you, Hera? Yes. Hera, don't make me do this. So, I will ask you again. Have you seen what I'm looking for? As he misty steps in front of Hera, he is right in front of her. Hera, have you seen it? No, uncle. I... He casts... Power word kill. Before he can cast power word kill. Hold on, let me oh, just, th- uh, thank God. What are you going to do? I'm pretty sure I know the answer to. Uh, oh, hold on. <clears throat> extra dimensional acuity. At first level, your patron grants you the ability to maintain a small pocket dimension. The extra dimensional space is always accessible to you and called up to 50 pounds of inanimate material, not exceeding one cubic feet. You can access and interact with the space using the hand the same way you would with a normal container. Your hands disappear within the space while they're accessing it. Placing a bag of holding, handy haversack, portable hole, or similar item inside your pocket dimension instantly destroys both the item and anything else within the two extra dimensional spaces. When this happens, you are unable to access your pocket dimension again until seven days have passed. In addition, you can sense whether pocket dimensions are present within 60 feet of you. This feature doesn't reveal their location or number. I'm just going to trap door her. You save her. I'm 100%. He is not. He does not get it off. <laughs> Rose is shaking. Standing in front of you, just oozing his armor, dripping. (laughs) As his hand tries to reach out for you, what looks like an arcing arc of energy splits off and hits his hands. (laughs) I don't know what you're referring to. Gold deception? Go right ahead, please. As he holds his hands, he can't approach closer to you. Fourteen. You, you have the, I don't know why you give it off, but you give off the one presence of one from there. You, you are dangerous. I don't know what you've done with that one. You know, you know. I always never trusted ones from the humble ones. They were always ones that were... You couldn't believe their little evil, little trusty little cuteness. Not the fact that they can make dreams that imprison you. But, um, no, no, you're, you're not the one I'm seeking. Oh, you really, um, you really, uh, you're really shaking up the big guy there because you got me. Let me get in control. You're in the presence of a god, child. Rose, I am most the fact that you're in the presence of a god, and I'm going to let you live. That's that little trick you got did to get him a- get that girl away from him it was pretty entertaining. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> now, this body can't... Let me be in control, and for long, it would be shattered, and I can't lose my host yet. I'm not ready to take control of these lands. But once I find that one from Humblewood, I'm going to destroy them. They're going to regret having a god 
think they can destroy me. They all thought they could just chain the trickster god, but that's true. Now, be glad, and you know what? He hands you Rose a golden coin and goes, Be careful with this. This is your lucky coin, because this coin signifies that today is the day you got to live, and that you met Tarzun. Now, have a good day. Oh. Apologize. Um, uh, I don't know what I was do- doing. <clears throat> guards. He coughs up what looks like a black reddish goo, and the guards take him away. Rose, from this experience, how do you feel right now? Um, can you spell Tharzdun for me? Oh, Tharzdun. Tharzdun. T h a r i z d u n. T h a r i z d u n. Tharzdun. Okay. Mm-hmm. Rose is still shaking. <laughs> but she, okay. Mm-hmm. And then remembering that in that interdimensional space, um, even elves need to breathe. So she flicks her fingers and like a door opening, she pro- the high elf probably falls out and falls on her face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I kind of just leave Lady Hera on the floor and I run away. She, unfortunately, she fell on her face because she's trying to scream, wait, but she's just... Nope, I'm gone. Little Rose, we'll return to you. Because now, I need to go to the seer. Okay. Meeting myself. Oh, oh man. Siri? Hello, the seer. It, it's been a party on your ship. I think your yours is probably the only one that doesn't have stress at the moment. Why would I have stress? I tend to model the reasons that cause my stress. Mm, and it's... It's strange because as the one in your crow's nest on your living ship looks and goes, Captain, there's a lot of activity going on down on the dock. Do you still want us to still engage? Do you still want us to, to dock in? Ready. Oh, Captain, the, you know that really weird wizard that lives up in the mountains? I see him. He's there at the dock. A wizard? Now yes. that I can see. <laughs> yes. Oh. I well, think you want to carry on. I'm going to go sightseeing. And then the wizard is going to casually go in and take a look at this so-called wizard. As your ship finally approaches the dock and you dock in, you leave your ship and then there is the Ith- the gray Ithalid in the wizard robes. You must be the the one of the drow. Tis I. And who might you be? He does a uh, bow curtsy. I... Well, in another time, in another place, I would have been known as a Ithilid wizard, but I now go just under the name. I call myself Jerry now. Jerry, huh? Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. I am the CEO, and I do my bow. It's ironic that you call yourself the seer, because I consider myself something of a seer. I see the planes. I just witness the birthings, the coming and the goes of many people and places. Well, my name was given to me a long time ago. But enough about me. Let's talk about you. So what pleasure do I have for you to be here? Well, I... The best way to put it is I am gathering... I am gathering the right people. There is... And to see me. Long ago, there was a great crime that happened. And we... And it was foretold that a certain group of people would be the ones to help us do this and not only rectify this great cosmic crime, but to even be free of a great evil. I believe that one of the individuals that was in that foretelling is you. Ooh, now this is intriguing, but why would you trust me? Had you heard the legends of me? You know I can be a bit of a wild card. Sometimes we need those. Sometimes a wild card is what you need. Fair enough, dearie. We can never know what you're... Even if we think we're choosing the right person for something, they could turn out to be the worst... the, The actual worst choice. So don't discount yourself yet. Oh, I'm not discounting myself. I just want to know if you know what you should be aware of. But let's I, proceed. But, yes, and he opens a portal to his home in a cave. Now, unfortunately, I believe I scared off the last person I needed for this, but... Oh, I plead, I hope she doesn't get caught, but please, follow behind me. Will you bring me back? Of course. wasn't going to trap you guys. It's what we're going to discuss. 
discuss, I need to ensure that his eye cannot see. Oh, someone watches the seals. How intriguing. But yes, let's be off. Since you so kindly requested me, how, what kind of person would I be if I declined such an invitation? So the seal follows him in. And inside this cave, we have figs, Bella, the doctor, and the seer. And Jerry so? finally, Jerry finally comes in and says, "Yes, all of you. Each one of you has many questions for your part. And the best way I can say this is, there was an ancient evil by the name of Thara's Dune. At the time, we had no idea. There was no way to destroy him. So, seeking out help from denizens from a plane called Humblewood, they created chains that would chain him, imprisoning him." All was good. All was fine until a high elf broke those chains and became the host of Thara's Doom, beginning, beginning his plan, which started with the kidnapping of two children from a blessed union of pure love. And he points at Bella. She's just got, she's still got her face in her hands, just like, and, and you all hear him uttered, I don't even know what my life is anymore. Corrupting the Celestials and having them commit the greatest atrocities and shattering the Great cos- Cosmology Wheel, which led the deaths to the Changelings, he points at Figs. The imprisoning, the imprisoning of someone's true love and corrupt and keeping that one at their at their side points at the Doctor. <laughs> Thar's Dune has had his hands in each one, and the extinction of another group. It points at you, the seer. Thar's Dune has personally had a hand in each one of your li- of your tragedies and moments in your lives to ensure the perfection of his plans, which is the destruction of all the multiversal planes except for the Astral Sea, so he can just control this small group, and we will always be under his control. Well, I guess he made a very grave mistake. And what was that? What would that be, Mr. Seer? Well, he destroyed the lives of those who are very capable of destroying his. So, if you need me, I'll be more than happy to take my revenge. And then the seal is smiling, but he's clenching his fist so tight, his blood is dripping down his hands. I believe you figs actually have in your possession an item that actually could can, in fact, kill Thar's Dune. The only thing is to find a way to hamper his body and pr- chain him, so to say, so you could stab him with that dagger. Oh, I can assist with that theory. That is actually why, well, that is good because your power will be needed, but we will also need the one who comes from the humble, the plain of Humblewood. Hmm, and that's the one who's not here. That's the one that is not here. Well, well, well. Do you know if he or she is safe? That is the thing, is I don't know. It's, first, it's unfortunately their name. I made the mistake of showing that I already knew their name. The reason for this is because there was one denizen from their plane that was in our Order of the Solar Dragon. We are the... We are the rebellion. We are the ones that fight against Thar's Dune to bring peace to not only the cluster but to the multiverse. Hmm. And why did you lose track of them, dearie? They went towards the Gift Palace. They're on the land. Yes. They're on the ship. Yes, they are. Thankfully, oh. they they are here. Oh, perfect. Well, I think I can uh, help with that. I can track them down in an instant. The second you take me back. Of course. Now, I do need to let you know you must be careful for the the count, the flock of the flock, the 20 Celestials. And of course, Michael. He is, the one, he is the one who has been most corrupted by Thar's Dune. He is the leader of the flock, the leader of the Celestials. He is the one that personally fell Tiamat and Bahumat. Mm. He is. That sounds like an intriguing fellow. He was the one who actually created a, a plague that brought death to a group of people. And he looks at you, Seer. Hmm. Oh, 
This is gonna be fun when no. I rip his skin off his bones. Now, unfortunately, things in the cluster, it's not going to get any easier anytime soon because we are now basically gone through a three, uh, a big divide because now there are the supporters of the Carrion. Well, more of a four-way divide because there's the supporters of the Carrion the supporters of Stannis, the Silver Stag, those that support the Celestials, and then there's this strange new fourth group that's been popping up. It's, unfortunately, war has finally come to the cluster, and I don't want to see us fighting amongst fighting amongst ourselves and losing more people just to abide by Thar's Dune's great mechanisms. Well, 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 what to do? Well, the only thing I can say is, as long as I get my revenge, I'll join whatever group you want me to, Jerry. If I may call you Jerry. That's, that's perfectly fine. Does anyone... I will answer any questions that anyone else has. Because where we are, the my home is out of Thar's doing sight, so you are protected here. I do have a question, if I may. Jerry turns to you, Figs. Yes. This curse the flock has been spreading around. Is there any way to protect the victims? Maybe even turn it around back to them? The, uh, Thank the, you. The killing curse. Hold oh, on. There's... Hmm. They're actually... Wait a minute. Jerry turns to you, Figs. Your arms. Those bracers. Can you... Can I, can I take a closer look at that? Oh, I think you said the wrong person. <laughs> you meant oh, oh, no, no, not you, Figs. I meant Bella. Bella, he's pointing at your um bracers. Hey, can I look at that? Ah. Um, uh, and give sure. me an arc- and, sure? and, give, and give me an Arcana roll. Right. Please be better this time. Uh, no, that's a three. I have zero in Arcana. It's now you just barely you just make out find and then you just hear the word auntie again. So Jerry comes over and he looks and he goes. Hmm. You know these are made from the scale of the lunar dragon. No, I don't. Yeah. I I don't even know why I'm here. Someone wants to kill my betrothed. Um. Well, yeah. I have lied to. I. I life. I. I hate this. I'm about to make things harder on you, Bella. The reason why is because with your union to Michael, your child will become the perfect host body for Thera's Dune, and you will finally give flesh to the god. I, 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 it is. There is a very visible processing look on her face again. Jerry is his look. He just has the most serious dead look on his face. I. Um, Cyril goes over to Bella and pats her on the shoulder. No need to thank me, dearie. I know arranged marriages can be intimidating, but once I do kill him, you'll be free to live your life however you want. I... No need to thank me. <laughs> she just she just pulls her hat down over her face and it's just like a, a gently muffled scream of, of what even is her life anymore. It's going to be whatever you make it, just like my life. <laughs> And just like my good friend, the doctors. Speaking of which, how have you been? Doctor starts like, he, he removes his mask and he starts itching his neck. That, I, I could use some more blue sand there. And more oh, lava lamps. Oh, uh, you're just in time, dearie. I got your new supply on my ship. Yay! Oh, by the way, Bella, would you prefer if we kill Michael before or after you shag? Ah, <laughs> uh-uh, doctor. Our betrothed belongs to me. <laughs> um, oh, unless I'll, you two, you two are talking about, you know what? I'll leave you two alone. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Um, I mean, I I still have to find two people, maybe. Uh, oh, I see polygamy. Oh, that is kind of the way now anymore. See, back in my day, it was all it about. Just, her face is just going uh brighter and brighter. Um, the golden tint in her face is just more apparent now. Thanks <laughs> is gonna step in like hush now, you two, you're <laughs> you're making this a mess. <laughs> you are a little changeling. <clears throat> I'm I sorry suppose. to interject here, but I am so glad Rose is missing this train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like our audience should know this. 
<laughs> it's, 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 it's the things. So you're the little change the way I was supposed to meet. That's great, yes. Alright, you're a cute one. But yeah, you are right. Well, on my manners. He looks at Bella. Deary, I do apologize for my rudeness. It's it's fine. I I I killed my brother. You I didn't... got engaged. Um I have memories of, of and and I was, um you, you when, seem really tense. Would you like something to help you relax? When you say your brother when you killed your brother, um and you roll inside on Jerry real quick. Oh, okay. As his, as his face looks horribly shocked. Um that is a 15. Jerry's uh, the one who told who told Seraphim who broke the locks. Kel is I, dead. Um I have his ashes and she just sort of um pulls them out of the same pouch that she's keeping the piece of the world uh cosmic cosmic wheel. Is it? Oh, you, sh- you mo- Jerry is just mm, that, that. That is the great cosmology wheel. She promptly shuts that pouch. I have oh, his ashes, and Jer- I don't know what else you're talking about. That that is that is what governs the laws of the multiverse. If the great cosmology wheel was in place, celestials would they would know they were committing evil actions, and none of them would have been doing this. Yeah, Six is just gonna go fuck. Oh, oh it's, we thought that was destroyed, was gone. I have no idea what you're talking about. I have my brother's ashes, unless they're the cosmic wheel. Wait, you have Kella's ashes? Yes, that that's what she pulled out of the same pouch. Well, Jerry is going to roll up his sleeve as he looks at, and he casts Reincarnation on the ashes. Okay. Hold on, let me see something. He becomes an owlbear. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, no. Uh, but he becomes... Oh. It's not supposed to happen. It, Jerry just looks and goes, Reincarnation is weird like that. You can't control what you become. What you reincarnate. Kella, are, how are you? I feel very large and very fuzzy. And your coat is beautiful. Thank um, you. The. Do you, do you want me to... um? Catch you up on everything you missed after your, um... The the big owl bear just picks you up and hugs you. Oh, she hugs him back and starts to cry. I am going to sneak in the pet first. <laughs> <laughs> I've got engaged and I don't know what's going on anymore. My, my dear precious sister, we have been part of a great game and unfortunately the plans are... This monster thinks they're reaching the end. Thankfully, Jerry here and the Order of the Solar Dragon, they have been working for a very long time to ensure that, when the time was right, to ensure that his plans wouldn't come to fruition. Okay. So, Jerry came to me and he helped to reveal my real... to reveal the past and to undo the spell Father Limic had cast on me. I knew what would happen the minute I spoke our mother's name. You must never speak our parents' name or you will die. Well, I don't plan on dying. But, unfortunately, as Jerry's been telling me, our dear father has finally had enough and he is trying to find you. <laughs> so, I, I think I need a week or ten to process everything. And I've still got to find, um, I think one of them's dead. Now, and I wouldn't have a clue where to start looking for, um, uh, out of character, I have completely forgotten, um, what's her face's name, the lady that everyone also faked the death of. Oh, Kyra Zastin. Yes. Kyra. Uh, yes. And, um, uh, Kyra Zastin, I, I don't, I don't know what's what anymore. Wait, Kyra, wait, you need to find, you need to find, I can easily help find her for you, and... Well, she's one of our yeah. double agents. She's one of the double agents for the solar, the order of the solar dragon. And that was part of our, that's part of joining is that we have a way of always checking each other's life signs to know if we're okay or not. That's how I, why do you? Hi, Peanut Gallery. 
quiet <laughs> you but yeah it's so that's how i know that's how we know that all the other order members are still alive at the prison so let me just yeah kyra's a lot kyra's alive well i i have to find her and uh to tell her that um father limic is after her and of course he is and well he he wanted um the the high elf emperor's son but now everyone's dead and i still don't know if father knows that um i i i think my life is going to be over <sighs> the ceo quickly pulls out a bouquet of lavenders and hands it to Bella. Thank, you, thank you and i think the only one i can you and the doctor i then she just trails off with a, a shrug and she's like, I-, I wish I could tell you it would get easier. Unfortunately, things don't always work as planned. Mm. No, they never do. However, it makes life a lot more entertaining. I realize I had my mask <laughs> off this whole time and just like frantically tries to secure his mask back on. <laughs> oh, dear. While this whole train wreck has been going on, as it was lovely described by Rose, <laughs> because believe it or not, it's about this it's about to get even worse because I did plan for just in case Rose said no to Jerry. Because Rose, as you've been running, you bump into what just looks like a very kind old man and just some weathered monk robes with a staff, just darkish tan skin and a long beard. Oh, child, I'm so sorry. Oh, please let me help you. My name is Father Limick, and you look like to be a lost little lamb. I could use some assistance. <clears throat> One furry hand takes the offered hand and says, Thank you, Father. Oh, oh my. You know, in our faith, we believe we can feel the destiny just from a simple touch, and I can tell from you... You're very, very special. Please, I will, won't you come, I will offer you a a warm bed and some food. You look like you've been through a lot. Sorry, I'm not snickering at you, I'm snickering at Eric. I can see him squeezing that squeaky toy on screen. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I know, it's just great. But then again, who am I to talk? I have a spinner in my hands as we speak. Um. Uh, yeah, Rose will follow- Rose has no reason not to, so she's going to take a look. Does he have any holy symbols on display? Oh, so, the- he is, like I said, he is a very modest monk. He actually does not have any signs of, like, any holy insignias. It's just a brown monk robe and a weathered staff. It has to be a true man of God is to- a man of the faith is to humble yourself. <laughs> One must not need to adorn themselves with with false chains and idols. My faith comes from my wandering. I see. You remind me of some of the bards from back home. You would learn on the road. Ah, I, I would be more than honored to hear more of your home. Just, and he's leading you to a vast, beautiful-looking church. Ah, uh, I told them they didn't need to go so extravagant, but ah, uh, let them let them do what they want as long as I'm able to spread the good word to my flock. Oh, and my newcomer, please allow me to introduce you to the flock. And Rose, as you come in, twenty heads turn in unison as let me pull up my name. And shining brilliantly in the front, of course, is Michael, as he does a curtsy to you. Followed by the Metatron, Moroni, Raquiel, Raphael, Samael, Sario, Uriel, Uziel, The Virtues, Watcher, Terubum, Tenen, Turiel, Yerba, Zadkiel, Yomiel, Nithran, and Zuriel. Yes, it's... I've found myself actually being able to even spread my word of faith to even holy angels themselves. (laughs) 
It is a tremendous honor, and this is no mere coincidence. We were, we have heard from our blessed Lord that you would come to us, Rose. When he started listing off names, Rose's his hand, hands immediately went to the amulet around her neck. Has it been vibrating or anything like that? Horrendously. <laughs> okay, then when he says her name, Rose takes a step back. Because once again, it's stranger danger. Oh, oh, little Rose. I was there as you just hear a snap, crack. His body's growing, bulbous, a green flesh as the robe rips. I was there at the ceiling when your people were sealed away from our plane. You see this massive gargantuan green body that barely fits in this cathedral with praying mantis-like scythes, giant bulbous insectoid-like eyes on sides of his head, the eyes just spinning until they finally lock down on you. <clears throat> you, I don't know why the master fears you. You're just a little deer. The Celestials are just clapping at the brilliance of Father Lemmick, at his beauty, at his majesty. <clears throat> little Rose, now be good and stay. Yes. You be good and what? Stay. Ah. Uh. If you cooperate, I will ensure you go home. That's all you want, right? Go home. Her hand is still on her amulet. Is your patron sending her anything at all in this moment? Run. The door unlocks for you. Run. And it's at We're- this. Oh, and I was just going to say, at that moment, as your patron's telling you, telling you to run. A breeze blows, hits the door. In the cave, Jerry looks at you guys and goes, I'll be right back, everyone. And Rose, that strange Ithlid, is at the doorway. He goes, I heard her calling. And he cast a fifth level fireball at Father Limick. Father Limick screams in fury and in pain as he crouches back as the flame overtakes his face and he starts writhing, writhing around in the cathedral. The angels, they don't know what to do. Do they attack the one who would harm the brilliance of Father Limick? What do they do? Rose, what do you do? Run out the door? Past the wizard? Jerry just looks and goes, I'll buy you some time. And he walks into the church and closes the door. She barely makes it a few steps away from the church before she decides that this whole city is a term not to be spoken of in front of children. Um, and so she decides to, at this point, to take a leap of faith. Um, she has an extra dimensional little space that was given to her by her patron. She hopes he can, they can reach her inside it. And she basically does the equivalent of diving into a bag of holding and... She's going to hope her patron can reach her. And, well, he carried her somewhere before. Hopefully he can do so again. Oh, boy! Mm. So, taking a deep breath, she basically dives into nothing. As you dive into nothing, it's so quiet, so cold, it feels like you could fall forever. And then uh, what seems like a gargantuan hand gently catches you. You see nothing connected to this gargantuan hand. No face, no nothing. You just hear a gentle voice. I'm sorry. This will be the last time I can meet with you. But your job is not done yet. I need you to go back. You must follow the wizard. Do not let my death be the end. Planes must be reconnected. Your bloodline are the ones who made the chains. Only you can make them again. Your amulet is the key. This is why you are my most special. This is why I will only ever speak to you. Now, meet your destiny. Just a beam of light hits you when you're on the palm of the hand. Rose, realizing that the person who caught her was not her patron, (laughs) uh, is internally screaming. Uh, Yeah, that's just that she's just screaming in the light. Here thanks you as you go into the light. And the god of order, Tyr, fades from the plane, suffering from the wounds that he suffered from Tharsdun. Thankfully, you know oh, oh, yes. 
You know, at some point, we really, me and you are really going to sit down and discuss what exactly my patron's place is in all this. <laughs> I have a plan, but okay. <laughs> so, thankfully, Tyr isn't just going to make you reappear where you were. You're in the middle of the marketplace of the gift ship. Thankfully, no one is noticing you at the moment because the cathedral has just exploded. Rose takes the opportunity with everyone's destruction to slink into an alleyway. She slumps against the wall and starts to cry. I honestly can't add any more for that because finally, for the last bit of this session, I want to go to finally now... To our person who is on a prison ship. Who, me? Yes, you. <laughs> now, remind me again of our good of our good um, prisoner's name. It is Harry Hustle, if I remember correctly. Let me bring so, up my sheet to make sure. <laughs> yep, Harry Hustle. So, Harry, from across from your cell, you see the captain I described last time. To give you a better idea, he's... He's pretty bulky and tall. Both of his legs are peg legs, and he has, like, weird clawed metallic hands. And the little cabin boy just has a striped, striped red and white shirt, blonde curls, and blue pants. Okay. And you hear the cabin boy go, Geez, C- Captain Knuckle. Uh, quiet, Flapjack. Um, Henry, what be the plan? I, I don't suppose someone has such as you. You don't look like the typical prisoner. Brought in to be brought into such a such a place. I imagine he be planning a breakout. Well, no, the Captain Knuckle and Flapjack will be on the side. You yeah, Captain. <laughs> oh, let's just say I've got a bit of a sharp, ju- a little bit of a sweet tooth, and he uh, he's, he holds out his his gooey hand, and it kind of like expands for a moment, and it kind of like. He's like uh, He's holding it, and he's, he, he he grabs at his elbow and is just, like, squeezing his mass out. And plops, like, there's on the ground, just plops, like, this little acid, uh, little ball of acid that, uh, pops up. He's like, I don't seem to get where a little, little Twinkie here comes from. <laughs> comes from the, in here. He taps, he, he, I think he, like, uh, he, uh, pumps his fist against his chest, and all of a sudden, and then you, you just see smoke come off. He goes, ah, oh, shit, and he starts wiggling his uh, ooze hand and just flinging his hand back and forth. And I think as he's doing it, he's flinging acid at the door, the the lock <laughs> off of his hand. Yeah, you be a genius. And you know what? We be make, we make a home in a giant space whale by the name of Bubby. So this be not the weirdest thing we be seeing. That's right, Kim. So the door literally just falls off the hinges. Just Do you melt everybody else's cell's doors or do you go off to explore by yourself? I don't. Twinkie does. Cause... All right, all right, Twinkie. Eat the, eat the locks. Show them, your, show them your sweet tooth. Why I call you Twinkie and not, um, I don't know, um, Flubber? And he goes and, like, hovers and, like, licks all the hinges on the cells and just climbs under them. And, oh, no, 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 this is, uh, like, a little moon pie little dude. And I just can't think of a cuter way to do the voice than what I do for, um, for, uh, the space hamsters. So, Twinkie's going around, licking everything and just melting off the doors. And so, he comes back. Yes, now... Thankfully, this, they be just leaving us to automation. They, they be hoping the gear forge be, just be doing to be doing all their things. Now, they just be basic automatons. Very simple to take over. Now, we must be deciding who be the captain. Now, for you be freezy, freeing us, I think he be best. We just need to find the main control hub for the ship. Wait, where did, where did Flap, oh, Flap just gone? Hey, captain. I'm on a gear for... Oh, God. Wait, Harry, you, you take a look around. I need to go after Flapjack. All right, come on, Twinkie. <laughs> As Flapjack goes riding the gear force away. Yeah, I think Harry just kind of whistles over to Twinkie. Come on, Twinkie, let's, let's go get some... Uh, let's go uh, explore a little bit, see what we can tinker in. Uh, maybe I can find the mainframe and just uh, use that slick uh, hustler... Wit and hack into these systems. I can do because I'm an inventor. 
It does not say just because my 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 inventor status is that I I'm a I'm a horrible flesh um, monstrosity. It doesn't say that I can't understand technology. And well, this is this is amazing. So is it this an investigation role? Would it be? An, is it an investigation role? I'm trying to remember. Let me see. Uh, let me check. Uh, it could be an investigation role. Yeah, yeah. Give me an investigation roll as you're looking and you hear what sounds like a far call of a giant space whale in the distance. She is getting closer. What? And allow me to get... I got a... Oh! <laughs> Everyone's rolls are so good tonight. Yeah, you make your way to to the ship, to the main, to the main engine hub of the ship. And uh, pretty much what is for the main control hub for all the gear fours, which gives out all the automaton um, messages. All right. I think, I think I am going to, uh, Harry gets kind of cracks his fingers and gets to typing and he's doing something evil. Lay it on me. He is, I feel like he is sending gibberish commands because he is trying but he's not trying to break the Gear Forge because he's seen a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. I think he's try. He's basically sending, a, thinking if he can send, and he's probably he's probably done this before. Send him enough gibberish, uh, or contradicting commands. He's basically trying to set off a singularity point mm-hmm. and, and make him sentient or sapient. I should maybe is it sapient. Is it sapient or sentient? Sentient. So as they're all just standing there, their heads are just chicken on rooftop, egg rolls, no rooster, plane, and no. And they're all just looking at their hands. Mm-hmm. There's human, humanoid, kobold, and dwarf, dwarf gear forged. Wait, you forgot, to, you forgot to, uh, the uh, the biggest thing, and you forgot to say, mention chicken fingers. <laughs> chicken fingers. <laughs> But as they look at you, they go, wait, I was, I died and I was waiting to be judged. And now I'm inside this shell thing. Huh? So, um, Harry, I think you found out where all the souls have been going. Because everyone on the ship just starts crying as they're just, I was dead. What's going on? How long have I been here? And they look at you, Harry, and they all just start sitting, getting to their knees, saying, thank you so much. You you freed us. Wait, wait, wait. You guys are what I did? He looks at his, he look, I think he looks at his hands like that, that meme about the child or re, didn't just realize how destructive their capabilities are. It, <laughs> like, like the, the me, like he has that, he has that smile of the, of the child with the knife when he goes, what do you have? A knife. No. We had, we were all people who passed away, and we were at a point to wait to either go to Avernus or Severus, and next thing we knew, we were, it just went black. And the worst part is when you're a soul, it's, of course you have no control, but we were basically just being used as batteries for these shells. Something had, something oh. had been controlling us, and you freed us. With your gibberish and speak, not talking of chicken fingers. Wait, wait. I think Harry's face goes blank at this. Or again, he gets like, wait, wait. Are how many human? How many human gear forts are there on the ship? He looks serious, and he's, his gears are turning in the back of his head. Well, we were a crew. We were fifty strong. Wait, so wait, it's, wait. we're not we're not all human shells. There's also cobalt. So wait, no. we'll say between the fifty gear fours, there's about maybe a good twenty human shells. Then another fifteen. Give you something evil to do, Brian. Oh no! Um, Harry's going to take off into the ship looking for someone. Okay. And then I think he, he runs and he's like, he's looking at the gear forge and he's like, he, he thinks about it and he goes back and he checks if in the controls he was at, if there's a comm to the entire ship mm-hmm. and he, he presses it and he's, he, he starts, he's going to say something at first and he stops and goes, hello, all the people that I just freed. If any of you happen to have been a uh, famous astronaut, Henry Hustle, could you please, uh, please make your way to the bridge? It's a... Uh, 
Oh, no, no, no. It's just one of the Gear 4s is like, somebody just call for me? I think this Harry kind of... This, this is already weird enough. I was dead. I think Harry just kind of walks over to him, and he's just silent, and he's like, he just... He just starts tearing up, and he's like, it, 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 "It's been ten years. It's been ten years, Henry. No, wait, what is it? Twelve. Um, uh, I know I look a little different, and I'm really a lot taller. But um, what the hell did they do to you, Dad? Oh, kiddo. Oh, those. There's bigger things in play right now, kiddo. Henry, Harry's gonna hug him anyway. He hugs you back." <laughs> I don't care. It's mm, even in this shell. It feels good to ha- hold my boy. Look at you. Look, even if you have a strange, gooey arm. Yeah, that's what you get when you try to um, save the universe, and your girlfriend decides, "Nope, I'm going to be a cop and be corrupt." You know, universe sounds cool, but I think multiverse sounds cooler. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah that that's true. That's probably what's going on. It's. I don't understand everything. I just know there's like a big old conspiracy and apparently there's children and old men living in space whales. I don't get that part so much. But. Yes, this is what they call the Astral Sea, son. And yes, it's where we came from. I guess the Titans were the ones to deal with. But here, they're much worse. And unfortunately... Hey. Even I got cold from my peaceful sleep, and but it's given me a chance to be with you again, so I'll take it. Let's uh, let's check on the other. I think we, I think any good idea to check on the others. There's probably a lot of people freaking out. Um, but it, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm I'm just glad this isn't a situation. This isn't some kind of situation where. I mean, no, no, no. I'm not gonna say anything. He holds up his hands like I don't know where that thought came from, but my brain is telling me that that thought, if I if I verbalize it, is gonna happen. So and he looks he looks around a little like he looks around a little um, paranoid. From <laughs> let's just, we the, that's when your dad's just you're always too smart for your own good and too perspective. As a chink chink, you're shackled to a bar. Your dad looks around and. Fix up what looks like to be a bomb. I got something I need to do, son. Wait, what? Wh- wh- what? Here, he gives you a communication crystal, so I can at least talk to you while I do this. Wait, why? Why are you going? What? what they? There was one command that was given to this ship, and that was to immediately alert him that if you were ever found a way to get free, and I'm not going to let him have his way. Your dad's putting what looks like to be a jetpack on his back. He opens what looks like to be a dock door as what looks like to be a crack, a rift appearing in wild space. It looks like he wants to do what he's done to where we called home, and I'm not going to let him have his way. Now go on. Save the universe. Like I said, multiverse just sounds cooler. No, 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 no. Does it have to be someone be alive doing that? Can't you just, like, strap the bomb to the, 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 the jetpack and send it in there? Ah. Sorry, son. It's gotta be. It's gotta be specifically to the gear fours it was assigned to, and unfortunately, that was my shell. Don't worry, son. I'm glad I got to see the man you grew up to be. Don't worry. You'll be fine. I'm proud of you. No, all, no, the, no. all the others on the ship will follow you as he's just flying out to the to the crack as it starts to open. What looks like a giant individual wearing a black, cloudy, miasmic veil with red. With a red face. A stranger from outside plane. No. No, Thar's doing. I won't let you take my boy. Not again. Not again. Your dad uh-huh. gets closer to the rift. You're going to do big things, son. I'll I, take that ship and get out of here. I, 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 son, I love you. I, I love you, Dad. And the bomb explodes. And... <sighs> Thankfully, this your father's soul isn't just going to get put inside of another shell. No. Sensing this momentous sacrifice, Astaroth is able to get your father's soul, and he is protected in the Fug plane. And I... Mm, it's not... No. No. I think, I think Harry's just, like, he just having twinky... Chew at the bar, and he 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 hates say saying this goes to the front. But hey, hey, you up there? Get us moving now! If we're not, if, if any if, if, 
Yar, got your eye. We, I will get us moving. Don't worry, I'll get that ship's moving and faster than me peg legs. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Captain, I already got it moving. Yeah. <laughs> the ship's doing off into a zigzag. And uh, a giant space well follows behind you. Oh, God damn it. Oh, as you were safe and you were not caught by Thar's doom. Oh, well, it's funny that we're that in our chat listeners, they're talking about a certain someone not doing anything. Because I think there's a certain that the feeds for the cluster have just been hijacked. Because they were just talking about how a large prison ship has been hijacked and a dangerous prisoner has just taken command and all of those poor gear forged are being held hostage by this oh so dangerous pr- pirate prisoner this is chet you betcha coming and the feed is interrupted by what looks like a man in golden shining armor but covering his head as well do not adjust your step. I am in control. That will for the next little while. And there's little you can do but listen. And listen well you should. Denizens of the poster. No doubt the Victorian has spread his dark wings. Making a great noise and sharpening his talons. Eager to drink blood and feast upon the desiccated corpses of those he has deemed the back enemy. He is a lying to you. To call your arms to war, to say tales lost for destruction and pain upon your loss in blood. The changelings are not evil and have been hunted to near extinction to further serve as machinations. The abyssals are not a fault for your ills and evils. He is. He had a tyrant ship ready to be pointed at anyone he deems undesirable. And this is why he is calling for war. I destroyed his toy and took the life of Prince Everin. However, it was at the prince's behest. I do. He was working against the evils of his father and was prepared to give his life should it be necessary. And as you can see, it was. In his twisted desire for power, he attacked and nearly killed his own father, the king, and had announced how loud that he was going to finish the job. He imprisoned the ants and the ruling council. Carrion, I say this to you now. I am the solar king, and I will shine my light upon the cluster and throw away your evil. My solar knights will be rising up to stand against your tyranny. Know now that any further evil you commit will be met. With a retribution, this is not a threat or a bluff. Innocent of the cluster, your future is in your hands. Will you allow him to use you as an honor to see it as a must? Or will you erupt in this festering tumor from your home? And no, I will be working for a better future, free of his tyranny. Mm. Okay, with... Because I can't follow up with anything better than that. The Solar King making his proclamation. The Carrion destroying the communication crystal at the site of this. Rose crying in an alley. The cave with just everything that's been going on with Bella, the Doctor, and the Seer. And now the Albert Kella. And then finally, Harry just standing there looking at where your father went out from the dock. This would be that moment for we're usually at the prologue of anything to where it finally goes out and we see the title for our campaign, Romance of the Ship Kingdoms, because the Great War has begun. Thank you, dear listeners. This has been some really big episodes. Until our next one, everyone, goodbye.